Hey there everybody, Sage Popham here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. And today we're gonna to be talking about using herbs for wound care. And I think this is one of the best places for people that are new to herbalism as a way of just kind of getting your foot in the door or kind of dipping your toe into the waters of herbal medicine because wound care is very simple, it's very straightforward. There's a handful of remedies that are very, very effective at treating wounds, um, sterilizing wounds, reducing inflammation, stitching tissues back together, um, and just all in all, you know, you can see it. Uh, it's so incredible to have a cut that you know, oh, normally that'll take a week to heal, and you start using some sort of topical herbal preparation, all of a sudden it's completely healed in a day or two. Uh, it's amazing. And so I think herbal wound care is a very important thing for, I think, everyone to know. I think every household should have some sort of herbal salve or topical herbal preparation that can be used just for managing your little bumps and scrapes and cuts and wounds that we all get uh, every now and then and or every day if you uh, live out on land and are working in a garden and you know active and doing things you know it's real common for stuff like that to happen and I think this is something that we can very easily safely and effectively treat ourselves at home um, with some very simple, safe, and gentle, but powerful herbs. So, so uh, this uh, uh, video is gonna go into some of my favorite remedies for herbal wound care. Um, if you have not subscribed or liked, be sure to hit those buttons here. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening to the podcast, be sure to like and subscribe. It really does support the channel and helps us able to continue to offer uh, free educational resources to all of you. So um, thank you so much for that. If you aren't watching this over at the blog, be sure to head on over and check out the full post at evolutionaryherbalism.com slash blog. And um, with that, let's dig into some discussion on herbal wound care. Okay, question number three from Jennifer Hendricks in Materia Medica Monthly. Okay, we are asking a question about uh, wound care. So there's a handful of questions here. I'm just going to read the whole thing and then we'll go into each one individually. So which herbs are used for open and closed external wounds? Open wounds as in bloody and closed wounds as in no more bleeding but could open easily if not careful. Um, I searched but couldn't find much except for a horsetail formula. Um, I've heard you state that you can't use beeswax in healing salves. Does that also count for open wounds as beeswax could protect the wound from dirt and infection, I would think? Marshmallow, you stated that this will prevent the wound from drying out. Isn't that what you want so the wound can heal faster? And lastly, do we have to consider people's constitution when creating wound healing salves as well? Okay. So I'm going to tackle all of these questions. There's some good questions in here for you, Jennifer, um, from you there, Jennifer. So I'm going to just hit the last one first um, because that's a really easy one. Um, no, you do not have to consider someone's constitution um, when creating wound healing salves. This, these are very acute situations. Um, you are applying it topically to a localized area. The only time, like to be perfectly honest, the only time you really have to worry about someone's constitution when it comes to administering herbal medicines is if you're giving them for a very prolonged period of time, right? You are treating something chronic, you're giving them a formula in you know, perhaps larger doses more frequently for prolonged periods of time. Otherwise, uh, the constitution is just a, a helpful piece of information to have about that person's tendencies and predispositions. Um, f when it comes to therapeutics, you just treat what's right in front of you. Or from an Ayurvedic perspective, you treat like the assumed constitution or where they are at now. You treat the, the symptoms, right? The, the, the core underlying uh, pattern behind the symptoms. When it comes to wound care, none of that stuff matters. Um, you just treat the wound. Um, okay, so when we're talking about wounds, 
treating wounds with herbs. There's uh, the, the main category of herbs that we're speaking about here are vulneraries. A vulnerary is essentially a wound healing plant. Um, vulnerary plants do so um, based on a variety of different types of constituents found within the plants. I would say the most common one that I think is almost universal amongst vulneraries are tannins, right? Tannins are <clears throat> water-soluble constituents whose responsibility is to weave together or stitch together proteins, right? So it's a tannin binds uh, tissues together. It tightens and contracts and therefore helps to close a wound. Um, this also helps to slow bleeding down. And um, oftentimes they will have an inflammation modulating property as well. And of course, wounds are inflamed. Um, that's the job of the immune system is to inflame that area, um, to keep it clean, to uh, promote healing, right? I mean, that's ultimately inflammation is the body's natural healing mechanism. Uh, it's just when it gets out of control that it's uh, not so good anymore. So we're talking about vulneraries and um, your question in regards to open and or closed wounds. Um, yeah, I would say you just use vulneraries regardless. Um, you know, you want to um, for an open wound. And so I guess the, the other type of action that you would consider here, depending on the severity of the wound, is a styptic. So if we're talking a very open wound, like, like a lot of blood is coming out, A, you should go to the hospital. B, um, in the meantime, you would use a styptic to try to get that bleeding to slow down. This is typically done in the form of uh, some sort of poultice or like literally just putting the herb directly in the wound itself. Um, and you can take some of those remedies internally. The two main plants, best styptic plants in my opinion, and I would imagine in the opinion of many other herbalists are yarrow or Killia millifolium and shepherd's purse or Capsella bursa pastoris. Um, especially shepherd's purse is a very, very powerful styptic. It's very astringent. Um, yarrow also is astringent. Um, but these plants are, I mean, Capsella is used um, for internal bleeding. It's used for hemorrhage. It's used for, um, you know, excessive bleeding post childbirth. It's very effective there, been used for a long time there. Um, but it also works topically. So, um, so when you, you're talking about open wounds, I would say those that are really bleeding a lot, um, yarrow and shepherd's purse are really great ways to go. You know, a gr great example of that is, um, I remember I was, um, speaking with Matthew Wood about yarrow one day and we were talking about, he was mentioning the third level of the blood and someone said yarrow works on the third level of the blood. He didn't really quite understand what that meant. And then there was this realization of, oh, you have these different layers of your circulatory system. You have the capillaries at the surface, that would be level one. You have the arterioles and then as level two, and then you have your arteries, level three. And it was like, oh, level three of the blood, the arterial blood, um, which is, you know, uh, if you cut an artery, you're like, you can die. Like you're bleeding out significantly. Um, that's like every beat of the heart is like, you know, you're losing a lot of blood. So, um, and then, you know, this has been, um, corroborated. I don't know if that's the right word, but conf confirmed, that's the word, um, by many an herbalist that have used yarrow to treat very si serious wounds. Um, I mean, you know, like the chainsaw fell on your leg while you were cutting a tree down or something. Um, they're actually, I've heard stories of that. People cut themselves very deeply with, you know, like a chainsaw and like there's yarrow right there. They just pack the wound full of yarrow and the bleeding stops. Um, so very significant wounds can be treated with yarrow to stop the bleeding, but it also has inflammation modulating properties. It has 
wound healing properties. It has antiseptic properties. Um, it's just all around. It's one of the best topical remedies that we have available, in my opinion. So the main actions we're going for for treating wounds are vulnerary, styptic if there's excessive bleeding. Uh, oftentimes we want to have some form of antiseptic property there to just prevent infect, prevent and or treat any infection that's present. Um, luckily for us, many of our vulnerary plants already have antiseptic properties there. And um, astringents, that's kind of... Astringent goes in kind of hand in hand with vulnerary. The tannins are going to have the astringent property there. Um, and then um, it's not really an action, but just things that help with the proliferation of cells and the healing of tissue and prevention of scarring um, is always nice as well. Um, so examples of that being... I, again, I think yarrow is the best because it really covers all of them. Uh, calendula, of course, is our classic um, vulnerary wound healing plant. It has inflammation modulating properties. It has antiseptic properties. It is wound healing um, and just very, very good there. Comfrey, of course, is excellent, um, in, especially in the way that it helps cellular proliferation. Now, here's where we get into a little bit of a specific dynamic in treating wounds um, that's very, very important. So, puncture wounds, where you get just stabbed. So, it's a very narrow opening, um, but it's deep, okay? Puncture wounds are treated differently because... Um, specifically because uh, in regards to comfrey, right? I mean, a lot of herbalists are taught, you know, comfrey for wounds, comfrey for wounds, comfrey for wounds, but sometimes they forget the little asterisk, except puncture wounds, because comfrey is so good at healing tissue. It's so good at cellular proliferation that it'll actually close the top part of the wound first and trap whatever's on the inside on the inside and that can um, make it much more likely to get an abscess um, and to trap infection there. So don't ever use comfrey for puncture wounds. Puncture wounds specifically are treated by St. John's wort. It is um, one of the specific indications for St. John's wort that is the herb to use for them. Um, it has St. John's where it heals kind of from the, from the ground up, so to speak, like from the deeper layers of the, of the, of the dermis all the way up to the surface. Comfrey kind of does it the opposite. It kind of is more of a top down approach. So it heals the, the top part first. So St. John's wort very specific there. St. John's wort also really good, a remedy for, um, you know, blood poisoning, uh, tetanus actually is one of the things for hypericum perforatum, right? Perforatum. It's like a perforation when something gets punctured. So it's even there kind of in the Latin name. Um, yes. So St. John's wort is very good there. Um, plantain is probably one of my favorites. So this is where also demulcent, the demulcent property comes into play, which was going to tie into your, um, question about marshmallow. So <clears throat> a demulcent can be helpful, um, for topical application on the skin, specifically if the, if everything's really, really dry. So you, you said, um, you stated that marshmallow will prevent the wound from drying out. Isn't that what you want? So the wound can heal faster sometimes, but sometimes not. Um, wounds can sometimes be more damp and hot and inflamed, um, but sometimes wounds can get very, very dry depending on your environment. Um, one example would be, I actually know someone who, um, they get these splits in their fingers, right? They're, it's like their hands get really, really dry and then they get these splits and cracks in their hands that you know, they're open and they're very, very painful. That's an area where you would use something like marshmallow or plantain because it, they have that demulcent or emollient property 
because they contain mucilage. So it's going to coat and soothe, reduce the inflammation. It's going to hydrate and bring moisture back into multiple layers of the dermis and um, and also be vulnerary, right? Marshmallow is a great vulnerary. Plantain obviously is amazing. Plantain is unique because it has a drawing effect. So it actually um, can be used to draw foreign material out of a wound. Very handy. Um, good specific applications there for things like stings. Um, or, um, you know, I've even used it um, from uh, puncture wounds from like a nail um, to draw anything out of that. That's just good. Plantains, like, I always think of it as kind of like an herbal vacuum. Like it like sucks stuff out. I once got stung, um, got stung and had really deep thorns embedded in my skin. Um, when we lived in Southern Oregon, there's some really prickly plants down there that got really deep and I couldn't pull them out with tweezers or nail clippers or I could not get them out <clears throat> and they really hurt. I just put plantain, uh, spit poultice, right? Just picked a plantain leaf, chewed it up, slapped it on there, wrapped it, take it off a little while later and there's your little patty of plantain and, and a thorn on the inside. So it just draws things right on out. So it works very, very well. Um, so yes, it, there are some cases where you do want to dry a wound out, right? If it's puffy and swollen and weeping and there's pus and infection, yeah, that's not a time to use uh, a demulcent like marshmallow, right? That's where you want to use um, things like calendula, et cetera, um, to clear the lymphatics and things like that. But it's for those really dry split, like dry cracking splitting skin. Those are where um, things like marshmallow come. Now the beeswax conversation. Um, so I, 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 I don't say that you can't use beeswax in healing salves. Okay, That's, so I just wanna make sure that I'm really clear. I, I don't say that. The thing is with salves is that you have to be careful in using them with infections like topical um, topical wounds or infections, um, especially things like a staph infection. Any type of infection that or pathogen or bacteria or whatever that is going to thrive in an anaerobic environment. Because the thing with beeswax is that it's wax. And so if you've got a super waxy salve and you put, cover a, an infected wound <clears throat> with it um, and the surrounding area, you're creating an anaerobic environment where that anaerobic bacteria is going to thrive. Um, I remember Paul Bergner told a story of someone that had a really bad staph infection on their face and they had put a salve on it and around in the surrounding area and they woke up the next day and the infection had spread exactly to the area where they had applied that salve. And so I'm not, I don't say that you can't use salves topically for healing wounds. That's not true. You can for sure. Uh, you just, there, there comes a level in wound care where a salve is, is inappropriate. And that's where you want to shift more into uh, washes, poultices, um, basically water-based extracts. You could use oils, um, but water-based extracts, I think, are the way to go. Specifically, washes, soaks, poultices, things like that. For your basic, you know, scraped knee or... Um, you know, little cuts and little, you know, the cracked hands from working in the garden and stuff like that. Salves are totally fine for things like that. Um, so I just want to make sure that part is communicated very clearly. Um, and yeah, beeswax, um, it can protect the wound from dirt and infection, I would say, um, but it can also trap it in. Right. So I, this is why, you know, when it comes to wound care, cleaning it is the first step, right? You got to just get all foreign debris out, dirt, um, 
all that stuff, you gotta get the, the wound very clean and then very dry, and then you would apply your medicinal agent to it. So really good questions in here, Jennifer. Um, I think this is one of the areas of herbalism that everyone should know about, right? Like everyone should know about calendula and plantain and comfrey. I think every home should have a simple uh, wound healing salve in their home medical kit. And, um, and this is just, it's, a, it's one of the most simple introductions to herbalism, I think, um, that's very accessible for most people. And, and boy, you can um, avoid using, you know, things like triple antibiotic ointment or neosporin and things like that. Um, where, because these herbs um, do so much more um, to support the body in the wound healing process. So, yeah, really great question. I hope that helped clarify um, vulnerabilities and these types of plants for you.